Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to Diane's home and um, another edition of Holy Divine Healing. And uh, we are um, very honored to be in your presence this evening and share this information with you. And I invite you to ask questions, and um, and we'll let Diane have a little intro here. Oh, thank you, Dan. Um, welcome. This is the Indianapolis Free Group Lecture and Demonstration. We have a room full of beautiful spirits um, and very loving people. And um, I kind of feel compelled to say, you know, we've all heard of the Great Depression, and we've heard of the Great Flood, and I think what we're going through right now is the Great Purge. Uh, because the treatments today have been um, for everybody um, to address the symptoms that result from the deeper purging of the downfall world and the um, darkness of the belief systems that keep us um, from evolving into further into the light. So it's going deeper, and we feel it more, and it can be more disruptive to our uh, physical, mental, and emotional states. But we have everything that we need to work through it, and Dan's gift through Holy Divine Healing helps tremendously with that. So thank you, Dan, for everything you're doing for everyone. And with that, I'll uh, turn it over to Dan. Okay. Thank you, Diane. All right. Well, lots is always happening uh, on the path of Holy Divine Healing. And, uh, you know, I've been doing this, I guess, 24 years now, uh, this August. Uh, well, this is that month. This oh, month. my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was August the 17th, 94, that I, I had my little heat stroke. And That's tomorrow. Is that tomorrow? Wow. <laughs> I didn't even realize it. 24 years? I think that's right. That's almost a quarter century. It almost is. Yeah. So I've been shaking feet a long time. Wow. And, and um, wow. um and it's been a total joy uh, to have a sacred path to walk and uh, a way to help people. Um, it's just a lot of fun. And um, as the unfoldment continues, um, it just gets bigger and bigger. I had no idea all this stuff was waiting to be done when I got started on this journey. It was uh, one step at a time, one day at a time, just like it is now. And always um, the, the M.O. of Holy Divine Healing is a demonstration of the parable of Christ consciousness where we surrender all problems to our higher power, yield to its will in our life by doing what it says to do, and just showing up and taking our step in trust. And, and you know, it's, uh, it seems like a little thing, but it's really a huge thing. When your faith is in trusting your inner holiness, that allows you to be on the cutting edge of what's new today, right now. And um, you're, you're going to be shown, told, and led in this moment by your inner holiness when your faith is in trusting your inner holiness. So if your faith is in belief, well, that stuff is all written in books, etched in stone. Most of it's pretty ancient and really... You're kind of holding the holy order into a past pretense and and not really allowing it to be what it wants to be right now. Uh, that can be a trap of that situation. So I find that having faith and trusting our inner holiness is the best way to be. Um, and um, it's, it's led to this because uh, I, I never know what's around the corner or what the next step is. I always have to trust to acquire that. But it always seems to work out beautifully, and so that uh, that method of acquiring uh, tomorrow's information uh, has always worked, and and um, and it's it's a knowing of mine now that it's it's happened so many times that through simply trusting in our inner holiness, we stay on the cutting edge, and we are in the right position to be shown, told, and led in every moment of every day through the knowing of our inner holiness. And I, I think that's really a beautiful, beautiful uh, relationship to have uh, 
with the Lord of your being. You know, the holiness of life that beats your heart is your access point of this thing called God or the Lord or, or whatever you want to call it. That's where a person uh, has a, the ability to access it. And sure, it may be uh, a lot more things than that on a lot of bigger pictures than just here today in our life, but our access point is the aspect of our holiness that beats our heart at this moment. And everyone can do this. It's actually a bazillion times easier than trying to figure it out and fix it yourself, which always leads you down the, the wrong path. And, you know, any time in life you've got big issues and problems to face, you're at a fork in the road. And um, one fork, which is the most commonly taken, is to try to fix it and figure it out yourself. And I think that most, you know, most everybody that tries that is not realizing that self is the little you. It's only 10% conscious and has no knowing. And it's always under the thumb of your negative ego that's going to enforce a belief system on you that's a programming from the authority in your life on the outside of you. And then it's going to defend and justify that belief system on self, yourself, by doling out fear, pain, and punishment. And if you ask me, that's a miserable life. And I wouldn't want anybody to take that fork in the road. Too bad there's not a big sign there. You've turned the wrong way. (laughs) The other path is what always brings miracles into one's life, and that is to simply surrender all of your problems to your inner holiness to be dealt with. That part of you is 100% conscious. It knows all of life. It's such a better option than trying to fix it and do it yourself. And all you have to do to pay for that in full is to yield to the will of your inner holiness. And that means when the whispering voice and the gut knowing activates, you have to do what it says. And and a trust level between you and your inner holiness is developed from that point. The more you trust in your inner holiness, the more your inner holiness trusts in you. And the more unfolds and the more opens up. And then all you got to do is simply show up in your day without any apprehension or having to know what's around the corner and simply take your next step trusting your inner holiness. And when a person does this, The door to miracles will open into your life. The most amazing things will happen that self would have never figured out in a million years. And it's it's amazing that it's always the problems in one's life that brings you to that old change point where you're at that fork in the road. And so problems are really an opportunity to turn your life around and get things back on track. And so that's the M.O. of Holy Divine Healing. It works every day in this practice, and um, I have never seen it fail anyone that actually tried it. And so it works really great. It's a great way to deal with the issues of life. And, you know, since um, September of um, 2015, when we had that big eclipse that was here, uh, that very uh, full eclipse is what started... um, the six-year exodus of the downfall world off of this planet. And and actually, uh, um, off of all levels of the holy old earth, which is much bigger than we thought. We'll talk about that in a minute. But um, being able to um, surrender your issues to your inner holiness is the gateway to changing your life. And it works just beautifully, and I... I challenge and I encourage everyone to give that a try, and uh, and you'll get great results. And to be a practitioner of the parable of Christ consciousness is to surrender all problems to the higher power, and that higher power is here in you, and it's what's beating your heart. So it's really a very personal thing that uh, everybody has the opportunity to do that, and And so it's really just a very beautiful thing. So uh, this September, 
I guess that's next month, we're halfway through with this six-year purge. And all of the problems that are coming up in people right now is their purge. And and that's what our sessions are based on. Um, you know, just about everybody I know has a beautiful part to them that is uh, sweet and harmony, loving and kind. And then they'll also have a part that has disorder and uh, maybe a little chaos, pain and misery, fear, all of these kind of emotions that are of the human aspect of our being. And so we are part human. We do have that aspect to us. And that's the part that gets worked on when you have a session of Holy Divine Healing. It's the part of your being that's um, less than it can be. And... um, and so uh, working this stuff out, getting through your downfall world uh, stuff is um, the subject of our of our treatments right now. And this is the season for this incredible change that's happening. You know, uh, this all started for me at my mother-in-law's Bay House in South Alabama. Uh, 24 years from yes, uh, tomorrow. Yeah. And... Um, Every year I return there for our vacation, and um, and this year it was quite different. I actually, we took off for uh, Orange Beach uh, two days after I got back from Minneapolis, St. Paul, and uh, I was pretty fried. And when I got down there, the very first thing that happened was the Holy Divine Healing grid system was disassembled, and it was offline. And, it, and I was told it was going to be offline for 10 days. So I had a 10-day vacation. I didn't have to didn't have to deal with anything. Normally, I spend a couple of hours uh, every other day usually working on the new stuff that was going to take Holy Divine Healing into the next year. But this time, that didn't happen, so I got a really good vacation. I would check in, but it was just how it felt on occasion, and... And I could feel big changes happening. And um, and so when it finally came back online in 10 days, I was excited to, to get the upgrades. And the very first thing that I discovered was uh, those blessings of higher consciousness that were very labor-intensive for me and um, the people that they were channeled from. All of that work in Holy Divine Healing is now complete. <clears throat> and all of that is now in the hard drive of the earth grid, and it happens simultaneously with me giving a person a session. And um, nowadays, instead of me reading one blessing to you at the end of your clearing, nowadays people are getting up to 200, 250, 185, you know, numbers like that of these blessings of higher consciousness that are all in that grid system. And I don't have to do that anymore. It's been wonderful, very liberating. And uh, it's like uh, having uh, an, another uh, couple of hours in the day or a few more days in the week. So it's really kind of taken the pressure off of my schedule. And uh, I'm very grateful for that. And and pretty much everything I've done over the 24 years of, of uh, doing Holy Divine Healing is now in this hard drive of the earth grid. And um, perhaps by 2019, if things uh, work out the right way, uh, this would be able to be taught to people uh, in a way that would allow Holy Divine Healing to be expressed through their gifts. They wouldn't have to do it anything at all like I've done it. All of my work is in the hard drive. It would just be a matter of people accessing the hard drive through the gifts that they do in order to spread Holy Divine Healing throughout the world. And uh, so it's kind of a gift to the world. And another cool thing about it, it would be free. Uh, It would be of no cost to anyone. So uh, we're just waiting to see how that's all going to work out. Uh, It would require funding of some kind. uh, But uh, that's that's all in the future. I'm just kind of letting that trickle and... We'll see where all of that winds up. 
Another thing that I was taught um, during my vacation was that um, everything that we have been taught about the earth has come from a voice of authority outside of us. It might be science. It might be the government. It might be NASA. Um, it might be the History Channel. Um, but what I have found out is that because it came, to, uh, that information came to us from a voice out of authority outside of us, that makes it all belief consciousness. And, and, uh, and so the belief earth is what I'm calling it, is far different, uh, than the knowing earth. Uh, and, uh, the thing that the inner holiness told me and I'll tell you right now, I haven't got my mind around all of this, but it sure is interesting the changes that it makes in you when you consider the possibilities. And, and what it was telling me was that the, that there are eight civilizations of people in and on the earth, and they're separated by a consciousness veil, and that consciousness veil is the sky. And, um, all eight civilizations have a sun in the sky, stars in the night sky, um, mountains, oceans, rivers, and they all believe that they're on the surface of the earth. We are actually in the sixth civilization, and the sixth civilization is a third from the surface. You know, we think we're on the surface because we got a sky with things in the sky, and what it was saying was that everything you see in the sky is actually reflecting off of the veil of the sixth civilization, and it's actually all inside the earth instead of outside the earth. And so this was a mind bender, and uh, it was really difficult uh, initially. It almost gave me a headache to think about it, <laughs> but it was such a drastic change on uh, you know what the earth actually is and and so the earth is far greater and far bigger than anybody believed and, and really the problem is is that belief is the bottom rung of the ladder of consciousness it's what beings do that don't know they believe and the problem with belief is that it is not conscious enough to see the interconnections of things uh, people don't understand the interconnections between them and other people. We don't understand the interconnections of the sun and the earth and the moon and the stars. And um, uh, because in belief consciousness, it's just not conscious enough uh, to perceive all of that. But that is changing. Every day is changing. Uh, exactly right. And um, But that's from where we start as uh is from that perspective. And to, to be able to look into the sky and go, oh, that's inside the earth, it, it does something to your thinking. It gets, starts getting things turned around the right direction. And so that, that was a very wonderful thing. And it gave me uh, seven earth equivalences uh, uh, to look at and to bring people into harmony with these earth equivalences is like calibrating and synchronizing you with a far greater intelligence uh, than you are. And that has a profound effect on people to do that. And, and so now when we get through with uh, the, um, uh, the clearings, uh, we put ascension keys into the voids we create. And once that work is complete, then we go through this seven earth equivalence chart that I have. And um, we will be given an in indicator of how many of those seven that you need to be brought into harmony and calibration with. And then we'll do that part of the service and then put in more ascension keys. And then, you know, your session is pretty much done. And you will have received a whole lot of blessings of higher consciousness by following that format. So the format of these sessions has changed from what it was, and and so, um, um, you know, you just never know when new things come along, and that's why, uh, you know, each and every person, we go through the parable and let 
the holy order be what the holy order wants to be. And when it's ready to go to the next step, you know, that's what happens. And, and so it's, it's bigger, better, and uh, it has really quantum leap from where it was the last time I was here. And I, I'm very grateful and thankful for that. Anybody got any questions about any of that? Diane, would you like to expand upon them? Oh, thank you. Actually, I was just thinking about I can speak from my own personal experience because I've come through a very deep and powerful and relatively painful uh, purge for about 10 days. Mine was very physical. And Dan was working on me, and, boy, I was feeling it. And lots of deep stuff was coming up, and I was <coughs> struggling. And... Um, Dan got into town here last evening, and he worked on me (laughs) in my own home, in my own treatment room. And I got up from the table when he was done working on me uh, and to follow him out of the room back into the kitchen. And I walked out of the treatment room and promptly walked into my own wall (laughs) with all my lights on in my own home. I was very disoriented, Um, slept like the dead. Woke up this morning, I have finally turned the corner, and it literally has been like I woke up in another reality. So the treatments that he's doing now really have taken a quantum leap in terms of what's available to us by way of clearing um, and then filling that void that we create when we clear uh, with the keys that allow us to access the grids of higher consciousness. And our consciousness expands, and it literally feels like a whole new world. And today has been seamless, and it's been fabulous. We're sold out. It's been nonstop, one person after another. It could not have gone better. So I'm loving it, but it's a journey to get there, too. And I was talking with Dan last night about what I don't understand, and he he gave me clarity about it, is why do we have to suffer? with this because I don't like the suffering part. And a couple so he opened up a couple things for me. One of them was he pointed out that what we're purging is the downfall world. And the downfall world, because it's a product of our fractured soul body, is all pain fear, pain and punishment. And we know from the energetic perspective, when we release this from our system, our physical and subtle body structures, We re-experience it as it moves through these structures and out of our being. And so we're actually re-experiencing the fear, pain, and punishment of the downfall world that we are now releasing. That makes a lot of sense to me. And then he also said that he has a little different perspective on it. I see it as suffering, which is probably kind of my own little victim mentality. And he said he sees it as simply it is. It's just a part of his process. And it's what makes it real for him and allows him to experience it and get it in a way that is going to allow him to move beyond it for good. So that was helpful to me, and hopefully maybe it will be helpful to some of you. Because you've heard it before each workshop, right? Every time, yeah. Yeah, they asked, uh, does he purge before each workshop? And he said, yeah, every time. So um, he goes through this on a regular basis and um, as we do this, because we are definitely bringing this about, uh, and we are going to continue purging and continue enlightening our being. It's nice to have that perspective as it comes from when we go through it ourselves, and it can actually shift it from an experience of suffering, perhaps simply to an experience of just true acceptance and surrender, which will allow it to unfold with much more grace and ease. Yeah. Thank you, Diana. Yeah, you know, the negative ego, everybody's got one. Uh, if you've got a fractured soul vessel, um, you know, the ego's um, what it's actually supposed to be in our holy order is, um, you know, everybody's got a 700 million year recording of being a holy being in the holy order where we have in consciousness. And when we were like that, our um, our ego body is its divine purpose to monitor our soul vessel and give our soul body a known consciousness. <laughs> and that's that's a very wonderful. 
That's a very wonderful thing. I can't keep a fiddling around with this. <laughs> you might want to explain in case it's creating a lot of, is it doing interference on it? <laughs> no, I don't think so. It's not. I've asked before. It doesn't crack <laughs> But the top of the microphone just fell off for those yeah. of you on the call. Well, it's hilarious. Little, little you talked when it went flying off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, in the holy order, the divine purpose of our ego body is to monitor our soul vessel. And inside our soul vessel, originally, were 13 components of divinity that were the gifts of creation from the 13 galaxies of this cosmos. And... And that's the God particle, the Elohim particle, the Archangel, Angel, Ascended Master. And, well, there's 13 of those things. And um, those things work homogeneously and uh, through their team effort, blessed our soul body with a knowing consciousness. And it was our ego body that monitored that soul vessel that gave our soul body, which is our masculine, a knowing consciousness. See? So that's wonderful that our ego body gives our soul consciousness and awareness. Hmm. That's a beautiful thing. But when the downfall happened and our soul vessel got fractured, that's what changed the nature of the ego body. It went from providing uh, uh, consciousness and awareness to our divine masculine in the infinite forms of appreciation, approval, and acceptance. It went from that to becoming a negative ego that's purpose became to defend our fractured soul vessel. And that's what self is. Self is the fractured soul vessel. And to be of self is the human condition that we all suffer from. And once the ego became this negative thing that defends the self, it defends the self by seizing control of its consciousness through the programming of belief, which is from the authority of your life that's outside of you. And then the negative ego, instead of giving the masculine appreciation, approval, and acceptance as it had done in the holy order, its tools became fear, pain, and punishment. And it cracks the whip on self to control its consciousness through fear, pain, and punishment. Fear creates anxiety and worry. Pain creates anger and depression. And punishment creates suffering. So any time in your life you've got those kind of feelings going on, you have taken the wrong fork of the road. That's all it really means. And you can get back on track real easy by stopping that and surrendering it all to your higher power. You know, switch over to the parable. But, you know, all parts of our being and our holy order are amazing and wonderful. The soul body has the ego, the inner child, and the adult. In their holy order, the ego gives uh, the masculine consciousness and awareness. The inner child gives us uh, happiness and joy. And our adult body is discerning, wise, and makes right action. You know, so that's all awesome. And, um, and, you know, it's, it's very interesting that um, your soul body has three specialty bodies, your spirit body has three, and your divine presence has three. But it's only the soul body uh, specialty bodies that can function with belief, although it's like the opposite of what it is with knowing. But it can still function, and this is why... The masculine became patriarchal and kind of took over the power structure of our being in the downfall world scenario. Uh, the divine feminine, its specialty bodies are the psychic, intuitive, and intelligent body, where the psychic and intuitive body function on our sixth level of consciousness, cosmic consciousness, and our intelligent body of our spirit functions on seventh level consciousness, God is consciousness. And those levels of consciousness, they don't even, they, they're like extinct in the downfall world where belief is dominant, dominant. None of the three bodies of the feminine, none of the three bodies of the presence, which are the multidimensional thought processor, the truthful processor, and the telepathy body, they don't function on belief. And those parts of our being 
became very miniscule uh, and, and, and and almost non-existence in this downfall world. So as we come back online with uh, these higher levels of consciousness that are about knowing, all of these new parts of our being that we didn't really understand or know even existed, they start waking up and they start working again. And uh, that's an amazing journey for people to, to, to take. And that will be happening more and more as we continue on in this ascension process. The, the downfall world purge will be wrapping up in September of 2021. And I haven't been given a date yet, but when um, the purge is over, the next step of ascension is people are going to be redistributed into these eight civilizations. And I was told that those of us that have been on our path doing our work are going into the seventh and eighth <clears throat> civilization and that we are actually a little bit ahead of time and that people that are just now awakening still have time to be on task and, and to uh, for this to work out for them. And all eight of these civilizations will be free of the downfall world and everybody will go exactly to the right place for them to continue their ascension. <clears throat> so it's going to be a wonderful thing. The other night, um, I was watching the History Channel, and they had a, a program on there about um, the masonry. And it was really interesting. They had a mathematical uh, formula uh uh, with the dimensions of the Giza Pyramid and the Washington Monument, which the masonry built the Washington Monument, but through the calculations of their equation, they have 2022 as this date of the redistribution. But the difference is their vision of it is through belief. And in belief, that next step of ascension is Armageddon to believers. To knowers, it's the greatest thing that ever happened, you know. And so it's like the perception of knowing and belief will become paramount when we get to that next stage of our ascension process. Well, and they see it as Armageddon because they see themselves, a part of themselves is dying. It's the part of themselves that is the fractured soul body and the belief system. Yeah, it's leaving the planet, and that part of people is. But there's another part that's taking its place that they don't know about that because it's a knowing thing. And so they just see it as the death of of the belief world and the institutions of it all. And Which is just a fractured perspective on it. Yeah, from belief. Right, as opposed yeah. to a, a more holistic perspective on it from knowing consciousness. And this redistribution, because each, redis each civilization is going to be free of the uh, negative life forces and forms of the downfall world, every redistribution into the civilizations is going to be an upgrade. It's going to be wonderful. Yeah, it'll be great. You know, uh, and this will be the seventh redistribution since the original downfall. Every once in a while it's necessary, Siri, because right now we've got like, first graders and twelfth graders in the same class and that doesn't work well for either one of them. And so a redistribution allows people to be put into the correct civilization for their own ascension process. So it's actually going to be a wonderful thing. Um, but it will be the end of the downfall world uh, belief consciousness stuff, those bottom three paradigms of life on this planet and none of them are pleasant. Uh, I've gone over those with you before, but we're talking about death, destruction, killing, and more. That's the first paradigm. The second paradigm of robbing, stealing, cheating, politics, and lying. And the third paradigm of gossip, condemnation, criticism, self-pity, being judgmental, self-righteous, and labeling others. All of that sort of thing is leaving the planet. And, and I think that's a wonderful thing. Well, that's going to be a major change in our life experience to have all of that gone. We are in for some very, very significant changes as well as shifts just to get from here to there in three years. Yes, uh, amazing changes. Uh, 
very incredible. And and it's these bottom three paradigms that are the creation of belief consciousness. That's where they came from. All of that's leaving the planet and leaving people, and it's leaving us every day. And that's really the source of all the purging that's happening with you as an individual and in the world around us that, uh, uh, you know, things are kind of going wacko out there. <laughs> and, and all of these things of the downfall world are now being exposed, and they're coming up to come out. And when that happens, they're, they're symptomatic. You have to look at it. And, but the main thing is to not go into fear and push it back down into you again because it's only going to have to come up again. And so letting, letting it happen, surrendering the whole nine yards to your higher power is the easiest and best way to get through all of this stuff. Yeah. And so um, the fear, pain, and punishment of it all will be experienced as you leave it, but it's not near as bad when you're surrendering it to your higher power as it is if you try to fight it and run from it, you know, run from the boogeyman. That that never works. And, and so, uh, uh, you know, having a clear, more uh, peaceful experience with it all is, is a wonderful thing. So, Dan, as we move through these purges, then um, uh, I think you talked uh, recently about the work that was done over the eclipse on some of the foundational aspects of society and how they're going to start transforming. Yes, that was really wonderful. That 8-8 that, uh, eight, eight Lionsgate uh, eclipse, um, you know, I, uh, I hadn't been told anything to do about that until the day before I was uh, told to be ready to go at 6.24 p.m. Well, at 6.24 p.m., the eclipse was total, and uh, and it gave me this service to do, and it was eight principles of the downfall world, and they were government, religion, the corporate structure, the financial system, belief consciousness, past life, Yahweh, and death. And these are all big things in the downfall world. And, and what it wants to do is to raise these all up to the holy old earth, which will start at the sixth paradigm. And so I, I got in there and I got it all set up uh, during the eclipse, and I was finished two minutes before it started coming out of full eclipse. And so I got in there and I got it all connected to it um, during that full eclipse, and um and now I've worked on it one other time uh, since then, and all of those things are now up to the third paradigm. And from uh, Sunday at our group healing, we're going to do another clearing on those eight things, and um, and it's supposed to bring it up to the fifth. And so we're going to keep raising these uh, principles of the downfall world up into the holy old earth as we go forth, and some of them will go into extinction through ascending into higher consciousness, and belief will be one of them. So we'll see how that all pans out. But all of the problems of the world, what this really means is all the problems of the world can be resolved through higher consciousness. You know, it's through expanded consciousness, a bigger picture, that all of the ceilings are consumed and all of the corners are removed. And all problems... You know, when your head's against the ceiling and your butt's painted in a corner, you're stuck. Well, it's because you've run out of consciousness. You have to expand into a bigger picture. And as the problems are encompassed by more consciousness, the answers are readily found. They're like looking you right in the face. And it's like, how could I miss that? It was right there looking at me. Yeah, but in order to expand your consciousness, we have to do the... uh purging the clearing and the cleansing in order to allow um, um, the ability to perceive and process more light, right? Big time. Yeah, and it's just a lot more pleasant to do that if you have a system like living the parable of being a Christ of being to assist you to get through that dark night of the soul, you might call it. But there is a method to, to handle all of that and um, anyone can do it that is willing 
to surrender their problems to their higher power and take that path. You know, that's the key. And and so um, we spread the word and get it out there and uh, and have our little events around the country. And, and you know, I'm very impressed with uh, all of the light workers, how everyone's um, uh, gifts are uh, exponentially increasing. And uh, it's like we're all going on this journey together, and all of our gifts are snowflakes. They they manifest and and uh, unique ways that the world's never seen before until we step up and do our thing. But it's such a beautiful, a beautiful experience uh, to be a part of that, and everyone can be a part of that. It's it's uh, the invitation is on, the opportunity is on for people to be able to step into their higher power. Any questions about any of that? Diane, you like to add to that a little bit? Uh, I'm good, Dan. Thanks. Okay. All right. We need a question from someone. There we go, David. Yeah, David. Earlier, can you talk about treatment for the here and now with the sensor cues? Earlier, you talked about treatment. How would you describe the example? How would you describe or give an example of some of those ascension cues? Yeah, uh, well, I have 20 of them now. And every ascension key has a feeling, a paradigm, a, 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 a light spectrum, and a, a celestial body. And so when you do a clearing, you always that always creates a void. And you don't need to leave voids empty because something you don't want will usually fill it in. And so once we do the clearing, we put an ascension key into the void, and the, and the key will heal that which you have cleared. It'll fill the void perfectly and completely, and then it will interface all the blessings of higher consciousness required to bring forth holy, oh, pure perfection to that part of your life that the, that the clearing was done on. So that's what ascension keys do. They're, they're very important, and they started coming in maybe – <clears throat> a year ago, I got five of them at a time, and um, but over uh, the year, I'm now up to 20. And um, if I do three clearings on you, I'll do three ascension keys, and and then I'll go over to the uh, the Earth equivalence chart and run you through those seven things, and see if there's any reaction. And there's usually going to be two or three that you need to be brought into calibration and harmony with. So you do a clearing with those earth equivalences, and then you fill the voids with more ascension keys, and then the process is complete. It'll say you're done. And and so ascension keys are wonderful. Yeah, they're huge, too. They're multidimensional morphic fields of sacred geometry that um, elevate us from – the lower paradigms into the higher paradigm um, through our crystal lattice. That's it. Yeah. Good question, David. Anybody else got a question? Yes. You talked about that in 2019. You talked the about in 2019. That yeah, that's a possibility. Yeah, that's a possibility. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know how to do that yet. It was just put out there as, as something to look at down the road. And uh, But if, it, if we get to the point it says, okay, now it's time, the method of how to do it will come forth. But... Like everything in Holy Divine Healing, I've never told anything in advance, Harley. I'm always, it's just the next step, and boom, there it is. But I was given that uh, information, actually by a friend of mine from Austin that uh, asked me, uh, Dr. Dan, who's going to do this when you're gone? You're turning into an old man. <laughs> yeah, I go, well, you know, that's some truth to that. I'm, I'm getting a little older every year, you know. And uh, it would be wonderful to 
have a continuum of this stuff. Um, after, um, you know, I'm not uh, on the scene doing it anymore, you know, for for some way, somehow, for it to happen. And and so the investigation started, and, and it looks like it's going to be by people tapping into this hard drive of the earth grid through the blessings of uh, higher consciousness that they possess, the gifts that they have, will be able to do that. And so we'll work on it uh, when we get to that point. Um, but um, right now, it's just something down the road. <clears throat> we're not there yet. Yeah, we're not there yet. No. Yes, Annette? Yeah, I've always enjoyed the jukebox. Yeah, I've always Captain enjoyed just the jukebox. They are. Yeah. Yeah, what, what those uh, uh, blessings of the jukebox are, they're the components of divinity that go in your soul vessel. And by listening to them, you put them back into your soul vessel. And I, I'm not allowed to do that for people. People have to step up and do that for themselves. But I'm glad to hear that you're doing it and other people are doing it also. But it's a, it's a wonderful thing to put the components of divinity back into your soul vessel. And, and those, those are morphic. Those are, those yes. are changing all the time. Right. Yeah. Are, are there now ascension keys associated with those? No, there's no ascension keys with those right now. They're just simply um, there for you to intuitively connect with, um, you know, through communing with your inner holiness. And those are for the healing of our personal soul vessels. Right. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, so those are for the healing of our personal soul vessels was your final question. So, yeah, they're part of the Holy Divine Healing Holiomorphic Field, meaning they automatically – morph and evolve as we expand our consciousness and we evolve our expression and experience of holy divine healing. And yes. is that accessible on the website? Yeah, it's on the website. Yeah, there's a juice box on there and you can make your selection. Yeah. So yes. What you're saying is when we listened to it a year ago, two years ago, we listen to the same ones now. They've upgraded also for us. Yeah, everything upgrades. Okay. Right. That's yeah. a great way to put it. Yeah. yeah. They just automatically upgrade. So you can do those again and again and again, and you will have a different experience every time. I, I noticed when I was doing them, I, I think I got them for a period of seven days, and I was just and I noticed some of them, when I was doing them, and they would feel very different seven days. from one day to the next. And then she would repeat like, them, wow, and they would really feel awesome. very different from awesome. one day to the next. Yeah, and they're, they were originally created in an effort to provide um, support and assistance um, of the Holy Divine Nature to people when you couldn't actually be available to do a treatment yourself. Right. So when you are struggling, and you don't have Dan there to treat you or someone else to help you, you can access these yourself, and they're very affordable. They're only $13 a blessing. They're very affordable, and um, they're available 24 hours a day. So um, a good thing to know when you are in a difficult place and you feel you need some extra help. (coughs) All right. Thank you. Okay. So more questions? Oh, I have one. Okay. You talk about the um, um, psychic, intuitive, and intelligent bodies of our spirit. or Yeah, the yes. divine feminine, the spirit body. Okay. So I have my own notions of what psychic is, and I have my own notions of intuitive. Actually, I thought intuitive was a, almost like a psychic gift, but not. And intelligence, I just have no notions around. So can you kind of define those and place them in a context that we might be able to understand? Well, uh, the first two, the psychic and the intuitive body, function on the sixth level of consciousness. That's cosmic consciousness. That's a a rich form up to 85% knowing consciousness and uh, does not exist in the downfall world. In fact, uh, um, only the four bottom levels of our consciousness work in the downfall world with belief, and that's unconscious, subconscious, conscious, and the collective of mass conscience. 
Christ conscience is the fifth level, and that one is um, there is a bridge that goes from um, belief to knowing that you can cross over into Christ consciousness, and that's the bridge of trusting in your inner holiness. This is really the first step of breaking out of belief is by trusting in your inner holiness um, as opposed to trying to fix it and do it yourself. That's what belief will, will dictate to a person to do. And so then you get into uh, Christ consciousness and uh, into cosmic consciousness and the functioning of your psychic and intuitive bodies start to function. That intelligent body runs on the seventh level, which is goddess consciousness. And goddess consciousness is, it concerns itself with our androgyne functions. And our androgyne is actually the, uh, the, the tools and components of our androgyne function. There's four of them, uh, the intelligent body of the divine feminine, and then the multidimensional thought processor, the truthful processor and the telepathy body of our divine presence, our, of the functioning of our androgyne. And so these different, you know, there's nine of these specialty bodies in our soul, spirit, and presence. And um, um, the nine all function on knowing. Only three of them can function on belief, and they all happen to be in the soul body you know, of the masculine. And that's the patriarchal uh, masculine of the downfall world. As, uh, as for that dominance, it comes from belief, and the other ones are shut down because there is no belief, or they can't function on belief. So you wind up with a masculine dominant society from that perspective. And, you know, the weird thing about it is that feminine and masculine, because every person, as a soul, spirit, and a presence, the um, the disability of our divine feminine and androgyne is also very much felt in the masculine as it is the feminine. You know, and um, you know it's really not fun to be patriarchal. It, it looks like you're on the top of the mountain, but it's a mountain of misery. <laughs> you know, and who wants that? Not I. And so um, we want all of these uh, nine bodies functioning uh, with knowing consciousness. That's that's the whole purpose of ascension. But I even come close to answering any of your questions. I don't know. And so here's what I'm wondering is, because we all have intuition yeah, already. Right. So, But this is a, a far elevated um, experience of it that I don't think we even know what it looks like. Yet. Yeah, uh, that's true. And uh, and those intuitions and psychic in, uh, imprints that people have are not always accurate, you know. Uh, but they will be when this all gets straightened out. Yeah, you know what? They'll not only be accurate, but they'll be perfect. And that's what allows life in the Holio Earth, on the Holio Earth, to move in perfect synchrony and harmony. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, you know, the finished product of where we're headed to, all of this stuff works beautifully and it's accurate and on target. We're just, you know, going through the pains of getting there and it's um, it's not always as perfect as it's going to be. Well, and I have to kind of smile at myself because I always, I've always thought it would be so cool to have all these psychic and intuitive abilities and everything. I mean, who doesn't? I mean, who doesn't want to have all these superpowers? And so, and then I used to think, well, maybe I just need to practice these more and, you know, I get better at it with practice, which is totally belief consciousness. Um, and the fact of the matter is, you can't from the place of um, lower consciousness, the lower paradigms and belief systems, bring any of this about at all. It's going to happen when your holiness decides you're ready for it, and you, we don't have the mental ability to control that. Yeah. Yeah, it would be way different than what it looks like in belief, for sure. All right. Some more good questions out there, David? Sounds about like three years from now, September. 
Yeah. Three years from now. <coughs> Combining and comment about the analogy you use yeah, first graders, twelfth yeah, graders, yeah, first graders in the sixth or seventh civilization. Yeah. In the sixth and seventh. You could almost conclude from that in three years. You could almost conclude people are going to be shooting off to the civilization. For some or all. Yeah, yeah, everyone is going to go to the place that is the best uh, for their own integration. It came up. Oh, Based on their um, uh, level of consciousness. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, you know, how much of the work they've done on their own ascension process and, and likewise. Um, but, yeah, it's almost like, a, you know, the Christian rapture thing. It kind of reminded me of that. Well, in three years, will people be in two dimensions at once, or are you going to leave this one? Yeah, yeah. Right now, you've got people like you got twelfth graders and first graders in the same class, and that's what the need for the redistribution is about. Because that happens over time. This will be the seventh redistribution since the Great Downfall, and so it's been done before, and it is a purification process. Uh, in order to allow people to get in the best place for them. And do you have a sense of how quick that's going to be? Or no, I haven't, I haven't really that's been. That's going to all happen in two years. Probably. Yeah, yeah, the redistribution, I uh, haven't been given the date for that yet, but it's going to happen after the purge is over. So the purge will be over in September of 2021. And when I was looking at all of this stuff that the masonry was doing, uh, they had the Armageddon thing in 2022. And then I got to checking with uh, my wife's inner holiness and what what they were calling Armageddon is what I'm calling the redistribution, okay? The thing is, the redistribution is in knowing consciousness. The Armageddon is in belief consciousness, Okay. So it's all about consciousness, and our level of consciousness currently cannot comprehend how this might actually occur. But by the time we get there, we'll probably have a, a, a better picture. A much better picture, yeah, because I've been running across that a lot on my travels. And, uh, from where people are at right now, uh, they can't comprehend what that's going to be like. But when we get when we get there, when it's the next step, you'll be able to comprehend it, and you'll be ready for it. And uh, perhaps that's why Holy Divine Healing doesn't usually look down the road very far. It's just more about taking your step today, because today is comprehensible. You know? So it's the next step. But it put that stuff out there for me for a reason, and, uh, and so um, I'm sharing it with you. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, and I'm I'm really uh, really glad that the principles of the uh, the human downfall world are ascending into higher consciousness. You know that uh, that's a really good outcome for for all of that. You know, and because you know it all served a great purpose when uh, when it was instituted. Uh, there was a reason for it, and uh, it lifted people off of the bottom of the paradigm ladder. And um, I'm very grateful for that. You know, government will be going in politics to the seventh paradigm in the new holy old earth. And uh, can you imagine, uh, you know, right now politics is in the second paradigm between lying and cheating. And, uh, and, and see in the second paradigm, the collective consciousness of humanity is totally polarized. And, and that's why you've got... Really good people on both ends of the spectrum, and uh, and there's a lot of hypocrisy. You know, we've, we've seen a lot of that in politics over the years. How how uh, a branch of our Republican or Democrats will be all um, in gridlock, uh, you know, uh, budget hawks or whatever. Uh, when it's the other side wanting to do something, but when their side gets in power, they'll sign the biggest deficit in the history of the country, you know. So 
You know, weird things like that happen when politics is in the second paradigm. It's never a pretty thing. But in the seventh paradigm, the collective of humanity will be united. And we will all have a common agreement on what needs to be done. And I'm really looking forward to that. I think that's going to be awesome. We'll we'll get somewhere, you know, and make the world a lot better place uh, out of that kind of a functioning. And and um, and you know, with this new holy old earth, right now it has a temporary ladder that goes from the sixth through the fourteenth paradigm. Eventually, that ladder is going to come off. And the holy old earth will be from the 15th paradigm of cosmic consciousness to the 999 to the power of seventh paradigm of goddess conscience. And when that happens, everybody will have a knowing consciousness. And, and you know the difference between a knowing consciousness and a belief consciousness is that when you know, you embrace responsibility. When you don't know, In other words, you believe everybody runs from responsibility. And that's why a lot of these organizations, institutions that we're raising into higher consciousness, we will no longer need them. They'll actually become extinct through higher consciousness, you know. Yeah, and it'll be a – actually, it ought to be – we have the potential for it to be a very – um, peaceful and graceful a transformation. Oh, that's exactly what we want, and that's why they're being raised right along with everybody else. And, and so, um, so we aren't going to have, you know, we don't have to experience the collapse of the economy or the downfall of our government or the overthrow of our country or another war or a mass um, influenza virus or whatever. We don't have to go through that. Yeah. No, we, we don't have to go through any of that stuff. And, and so it's a wonderful way out of things. And and also you get to embrace and ascend into higher consciousness things that you may have issues with in your own belief system. You know, so it's also a method for you to heal your own your own belief stuff, you know. And, mm-hmm. uh, and so that's what... Um, that's what's being put in front of our face, and and um, and you know through ascending into higher consciousness is, is how it gets handled, and that's always a, a very positive way to do things. Yeah, and it's interesting because you're about the third person today who has talked about it's right in front of my face, Marguerite, and someone else, and you, Dan. So. When our consciousness expands, we are able to see that which we could not previously see. That's it. And it's right in front of your face. Right in front of your face. <laughs> yeah. So, wonderful. Well, and it's the blindness to it that keeps you stuck in the lower paradigm That's and it. in the belief consciousness. You can't see it. Um, everybody else around you might be able to see it, but, but you can't. I can't when I'm in it. Yeah. And then when you do get to the point where you can finally see it, you know that deer in the headlights look? <laughs> that's what that's about. Because then you're going, oh, now you can see it. And it's a huge revelation. Right. That is an expansion of consciousness. Now you can see something that you couldn't see before that was a real limiting factor for you. Right. And now you can heal it. And when you heal it, it no longer limits you. You're liberated from it, and you're liberating yourself. Yeah, you no longer have fear, pain, and punishment about it. And that's out of your life with it. So things get cleaned up through higher consciousness. So it's a beautiful way to resolve dilemmas and to heal our own personal issues is by ascending into higher consciousness. Well, it's the only way we can do it. We can only do it each for ourselves. That's what a sovereign being is. Uh, Yeah. You know, sovereign in the holiness that beats your heart. You know, you have a holy being within you. And to be in communion with that, it makes you a sovereign being. You um, embrace responsibility. You know, you, you take action. And and you do things uh, that are really loving and kind and make life better for everybody. So that's all coming. Um, and so uh, if you understand that, it, it uh, I think the reason why... Uh, it's, it's shown this stuff is because people need to have uh, something to look forward to as they go through the purge. There's a reason for it, why you're doing what you're doing and having to go through this. And, 
and that reason is for um, this redistribution and this new um, knowing earth uh, to take charge and the consciousness of all holy beings and to have an appreciation for how we're all interconnected. And that makes us much more uh, a tolerable and a loving and kind to one another. Okay, are we ready for a demonstration of the new stuff? All right, let me uh, try to pull the table over this way. We're going to modify our setup just a bit. Just a little. Here for just a moment. I'll just put it in the chair. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, can we use that? Anybody got a pillow that they're tired of on their back? Not, not that one. Here, this is being used. Well, that yeah, that was not good. This is perfect. That's what I was looking for. Okay, it's David on the couch. Okay, we're just going to do a, uh, a session on David here, uh, and everybody will uh, benefit from this. And uh, see, David, uh, lift your legs just a little. There we go. All right, let's see what we got here. This session for David is orchestrated by Living Holiness at Beats His Heart. Dan is a servant with Christ in conscience. O Alpha, O Iota, Omega, O Iota, Omega, O Alpha, Omega, O Alpha, O Iota. Okay, Holiness of David. You know everything about David from A to Z. Everything going on in his life and what his greatest needs are as he does his ascension process. And the answer is yes. How many bars to be cleared? Two bars. Two major things. The first one. is a 13 digit date. Let's see. So this is a date that uh, on which an event occurred that is um, interfering with his life expression today. Yeah.
Yeah, these 13 digit dates are the date with the BCAD snap foozle taking out of the date line, you know, because that's uh, a totally weird thing that was done, I suppose, by the Catholic Church. Because um, uh, for one thing, you couldn't have descending years of BC, you know, that got down to one before the birth of Jesus. And that was all, you know, rigged up. And and it did a really bad thing uh, because the divine flow of life travels down the, the timeline. It like put an hourglass restriction on the timeline, and it actually caused the Dark Ages that resulted shortly after they had done that. And um, and so this is the date that we would have uh, if that had to happen. So our birthdays would be huge. You know, 15 digits for the year you were born. Kind of clumsy, actually, but that's the way it would be. Okay. So as we move beyond this, we're going to have a much different relationship with time. Much, yeah. Yeah, much different. Much more now oriented. And, uh, you know, future and the past are caused by a fractured mental body. You know, sorry's in the past, worries in the future. It's not ever either one of them. It's always now. And now is okay if you're not worried about the past or the future. And now is eternal, whereas yeah. in the lower life expression, Time is limited by a clock and minutes and seconds and days and all that. Yeah. All that's going away. It is. It is. This um, this first clearing involves um, um, David's emotional body and his physical body. There's a conflict between the two, and it comes from this 13-digit date. And there are six mutating models of David's life stream that, that is the core behind what this problem between his emotional and physical body is. There's two organs in his physical body, his liver and large intestines, 87 other issues in the physical. Okay, we want to clear the mutating models from David's live stream of 7, 6, 87, 16, 11, 9, and 71. Pull all of this out of David's emotional body and all of its negative discord out of his physical body of his downfall world. From 1 trillion, 686 billion, 691 million, 211,169. Remove all contraptions, issues, collateral issues, all debris of the downfall world, all manifestations of all creations of the mutating models of David's live stream of 7, 6, 87, 16, 11, 9, and 71. Pull all of this out of David's emotional body and all of its negative discord out of his physical body and make it true for David. And then bring forth 
all aspects of David's emotional body and all of its relationships to his physical body of health and wellness into the holy order of O of David through holy O pure perfection three times to make it true. How many platforms to be cleared? Ten hundred thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand, million, ten million, hundred million, billion, ten billion, hundred billion, trillion, ten trillion, hundred trillion, bazillion, ten bazillion, hundred bazillion, quadillion, ten quadillion, hundred quadillion, quadillion and two, six quadillion and eight platforms. Deposit all of it into the Holy Old Moon portal for disposal, clearing, and cleansing. The Holy Old Pure Perfection. The Holy Old Pure Perfection. The Holy Old Pure Perfection. And it is done. Okay, our next <clears throat> clearing for David here is a conflict between his ego body of his fractured soul and his physical body again, two organs, pancreas and large intestines. Seven hundred seventy six other things in his physical body. And this comes from July the 16th of 1976. And this is a re-integration uh, of that first thing that we uh, worked on with a little bit different slant to it. Uh, but it brought all of that back to life again. We want to clear the four mutating models of David's live stream of 6, 9, 67, and 1. Pull all of this out of David's ego body of his fractured soul and all of its negative discord out of his physical body of his downfall world from 71676. Remove all contraptions, issues, collateral issues, all debris of the downfall world, all manifestations of all creations of the mutating models of David's live stream of 6967 and 1. Pull all of this out of David's ego body of his fractured soul and all of his negative discord out of his physical body of his downfall world and make it true for David. And then bring forth all aspects of David's ego body of his holy soul and all of its relationships to his physical body of health and wellness into the holy order of O of David through holy O pure perfection three times and make it true. How many platforms to be cleared? Ten hundred thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand, million, ten million, hundred million, billion, ten billion, hundred billion, trillion, ten trillion, hundred trillion, bazillion, ten bazillion, hundred bazillion, quadillion, ten quadillion, hundred quadillion, quadillion and two, six quadillion and eight platforms. Deposit all of it into the Holy O Moon Portal for disposal, clearing, and cleansing. The Holy O Pure Perfection. The Holy O Pure Perfection. The Holy O Pure Perfection. And it is done. And now we need to place two ascension keys 
into the void we've created. The seventh key, the feeling of truth. The 33rd paradigm of absolute truth. The clear white crystal light and David's soul star now fill the void created from this clearing in order to heal all things cleared, to fill the void perfectly and completely, and to interface all blessings of higher consciousness required to bring forth holy, oh, pure perfection three times in the David's life. And it is done. What key was that? The seventh. Wow. That's like a seminal key. And the thirteenth key, the feeling of bliss, the old paradigm of the creation of the holy being of the holy O of David, who is blessed with a knowing consciousness that understands all of life. The clear purple crystal light of the constellation of Pleiades now fill the void created from this clearing in order to heal all things cleared, to fill this void perfectly and completely and to interface all blessings of higher consciousness required to bring forth holy, oh, pure perfection three times into David's life, and it is done. Okay, and there's two of our earth equivalences to be to bring David into harmony with. Okay, we want to clear the one mutating model from David's live stream of 966876. Pull all of this out of the two Taurus of the earth and all of its negative discord out of the eight civilizations of the earth of David. Remove all contraptions, issues, collateral issues, all debris of the downfall world, all manifestations of all creations of the mutating model of 966876. Pull all of this out of the two Taurus of the earth and all of its negative discord out of the eight civilizations of the earth and make it true for David, and then bring forth all aspects of the Earth's two Taurus and all of its relationships to the Earth's eight civilizations into the holy order of O of David through holy O pure perfection three times and make it true. How many platforms to be cleared? Ten hundred thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand, million, ten million, hundred million. Billion, ten billion, hundred billion, trillion, ten trillion, hundred trillion, bazillion, ten bazillion, hundred bazillion, quadillion, ten quadillion, hundred quadillion, quadillion in two, six quadillion in eight platforms. Deposit all of it into the Holy O Moon Portal for disposal, clearing, and cleansing. The Holy O Pure Perfection. The Holy O Pure Perfection. The holy O pure perfection, and it is done. I want to clear the two mutating models of seven and sixty seven out of Davis live stream. Pull all of this out of the sustainability of the earth and all of its negative discord out of the family of the earth of David. Remove all contractions, issues, collateral issues, all debris of the downfall world, all manifestations of all creations of the mutating models of 7 and 67. Pull all of this out of the sustainability of the earth and all of this negative discord out of the family of the earth of David and make it true. And then bring forth all aspects of the earth's sustainability and all of its relationships to the earth family of David 
into the holy order of O of David, through holy O pure perfection, three times, and make it true. How many platforms to be cleared? Ten hundred thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand, million, ten million, hundred million, billion, ten billion, hundred billion, trillion, <clears throat> ten trillion, hundred trillion, bazillion, ten bazillion, hundred bazillion, quadrillion, ten quadrillion, hundred quadrillion, quadrillion and two, six quadrillion and eight platforms. Deposit all of it into the Holy Open portal for disposal, clearing, and cleansing. The Holy O Pure Perfection, the Holy O Pure Perfection, the Holy O Pure Perfection, and it is done. And now two more ascension keys. The 15th key, the feeling of friendship. The sixth paradigm of having positive feelings as a result of experiences in life with others. The clear pink crystal light and the constellation of Ursa Minor now fill the void created from this clearing. To heal all things clear, to fill this void perfectly and completely, and to interface all blessings of higher consciousness required to bring forth holy o pure perfection three times into David's life. And it is done. And the 16th key, the feeling of virtuous, 8 to the power of 5 to the power of 7 paradigm, the clear octave ruby red crystal light, and the north star now fill the void created from our clearing in order to heal all things cleared, to fill the void perfectly and completely, and to interface all blessings of higher consciousness required to bring forth holy o pure perfection three times into David's life. And it is done. David received 172 blessings of higher consciousness from this session. And it'll be uh, transformed in about a day. But that filled David up. That's uh, all we're supposed to do. So that's wonderful. All right, David, just thank you. Come up as you can. I don't think you can. <laughs> About a day, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to transform it'll take about a day. <laughs> All right, bro. Thank you. Very awesome. Thank you to be here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any questions about any of that? Pretty cut and dry. And yeah, pretty cut and dry. <laughs> I couldn't stop. I can't stop yawning. I couldn't stop yawning. My, I look like I've been bawling, but it's from all the yawning. And so I don't know where I went. Felt very, very, you know, far or deep. Yeah, shifting dimensions. Oh. Right? That's what yawning's about. Like I have never done before in these. I mean, I do, we do that a lot, but this was nonstop. And um, very much feeling like I was right there with you, David. Feeling the um, interconnectedness of all life. So thank you to everybody because I know everybody there. And thank you because I'm getting, I get, I'm getting a lot from this too, and I don't even know what it is. Um, So you're right. Um, You're welcome, and thank you, (laughs) and thank you, Dan. You're welcome. Very honored to do that. Okay, and then last time you were here. I believe we were introduced to the moon portal. That's how we were introduced to the moon the portal. The portal. That's the place yes. where we dispose of our dance ball. I noticed that the, the moon portal is being used. Moon portal. It's, it's still being used. Okay. Yes, it is. Yeah. There's, there's still a lot of room in that portal for <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not going to get filled up. It's, it's, it's 
It's like a condo that doesn't get clogged up. It's like an endless outhouse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's uh it's pretty amazing and it's uh you know, it's a component of the Miglio Meglius portal that's stationed by the very highest of consciousness crystal light beings and they know what to do with your downfall rubble. Mm-hmm. You know, if it's got fractures, parts and pieces of your former holiness, they're cleared, cleansed, rebalanced and returned to you. And if it's just simply downfall rubble, it goes to where it came from outside of the nine clusters. Yeah, and, and see, uh, that is where all of these models of mutation come from. They come from outside of the nine clusters. They got in here when we broke our brown ray, warning an expansion of the 13-dimensional matrix of heaven on earth. Way back when, uh, you know, we, we broke that ray and, and created a necessity that we acquire understanding to go with our knowing. Well, all of those mutating models, they're fine in the system that they came from. They just can't work in the holy old model. They'll mutate the beam, and that's what happens. They get on you. They have to have a light source to live, and they try using your beam, and it mutates, and that becomes your problem. And and so the moon portal is how all of that stuff is disposed of. The crystal beads are doing a very efficient ecological process of masterful recycling. Yeah, oh, it's, it's masterful that? recycling. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's a recycling thing. It reduces our carbon footprint somehow, some way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we feel better about it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, our downfall world footprint, yeah, it, it gets recycled back to where it's supposed to be. Yeah. I think if we think of it like that, it's a little easier to have the courage and realm because we're returning this to where it should go. That's exactly right, and there's no bad in any of it. It's all, it was just all, it was all a school of understanding, and we're the ones that demonstrated the necessity that we acquire understanding to go with our knowing, so there is no blame. You know, we're the ones that did the action that that created the necessity for the downfall world to happen. And it was just a school of understanding, and now it's all being cleared up and cleansed, and the, the mutating models return to the system that they're holy in, and there's no bad, there's no blame, and it's all it's all wonderful. It all comes out in the wash. Like we just borrowed that for a little while. Yeah, it was just summer camp we went to to acquire understanding. And, and now that we've got it, time to disassemble the circus and send it back to where it came from. And uh, we retain our understanding, but we flush all the downfall rubble down the moon portal. Yeah. That's a nice tool to have when we're at a fork in the road and we don't realize we're at the fork in the road and we're just frustrated. Yeah. Pull out that tool of the moon portal. That's right. And just start Put it in there. That's right. If if in doubt, put it in the moon portal, and only good things are going to happen. If it's a, if it's a part of us that got fractured, it's returned to us. If it's just the downfall rubble of the uh, of the school, it goes back to where it's supposed to be. Yeah, and uh, and you know the the school itself was brought in here as a planet from a system of one outside of the nine clusters, 87 life forms that ran the school of understanding. And every single bit of it wants to go home. And none of it is going to fight to stay on you. You just have to have the courage to release it and stick it in the moon portal. Do the parable, you know, that there's uh, whatever appeals to you along those lines will work just beautifully. Okay. Thank you. Marguerite? I think the framework or working or something is creating some practical applications of this along with using my own portal and using my own portal. So with my clients, I'll ask that a whole little perfectionator be installed in them and then go to memory, like maybe they're looking for the whole little perfectionator. 
when I get on a plane, okay. I ask that for the claim. When she gets all the things she has put the board meetings, top of people that officially need it. And their airport, airport or if I'm traveling and it becomes a pond or sitting by for the whole little order of water. To come to the the water of water is and the pond or it's not that it makes me feel better. But I think it needs to be better, but I think it should be. Well, I think it is, uh, Marguerite, and it's also, um, it's you accessing that hard drive of the earth, and you're using this stuff, you know, and that's what it's there for, and I'm I'm very pleased to see that. Yeah, so use your own imagination and expand upon that, you know, it's it's all good. That's wonderful. Thanks for sharing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Hmm. All right. We had enough of this? We Ready to call it a night? Okay, I think we're out of questions. I thank all of y'all on the phone. Uh, as always, you're very important and very much appreciated in the Holy Divine Healing Movement to return our planet to a holy planet and to make all of us holy beings again. And uh, thank you very much, and uh, we will talk soon. Thank you.